So over the last decade that I've been an entrepreneur, I've seen people succeed and I've been, you know, I've seen people actually fail. And out of all the people that actually succeeded, I realized that they had 13 different characteristics that the people that did not fail did not have. And in this video, I'm going to share with you those 13 characteristics that I discovered as an entrepreneur. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer and show you what those are. So as I was going through and trying to make this list, I mean, this list could go on and on and on. But honestly, those are the most important things that I personally, um, some of those things I was the victim of, and that's why they're here. Others, I've seen other people do and not work out for them. And I was fortunate enough to realize those things and then avoid them. But trust me, I've been a victim of a lot of those things. And what I'm going to tell you here today is actually based on experience. And I'm even going to drop some uh, of my personal stories for some of those. So these are really important. Pull out your pen and paper and start taking some notes. Uh, with that said, if this is your first time to the channel, uh, uh, welcome. Uh, please consider subscribing as we drop brand new videos every single week about entrepreneurship, selling on Amazon, and other things that can help you. Crash it out there in the universe. And please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. So the very first one, and this for me, you're going to hear me talk about this all the time. Um, you're going to hear me say the two words and the two phrases, kiss and focus, focus and kiss. And those things go alongside each other. But doing too many things at the same time, uh, you know, society tells you that, you, you know, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Well, you know what? First of all, no one wants to become a millionaire because trust me, it's nothing special. And a million dollars in today's economy is nothing. That's the very first thing. The second thing is it's not true because I've never met a millionaire who has seven streams of income. Um, any person that has succeeded at the highest levels in life has done it with one thing. Uh, they had, they launched the company and then they just, you know, I mean, just ran with it until it was successful. Either sold it and went into something else or, you know, uh, just kept on building on top of it. And then once they had made it, they went into other things. You look at people like Jeff Bezos. He launched an online bookstore. And once that succeeded, then he launched music. And then he started selling everything else. And then Amazon was the only thing he did for a long time until he went into Blue Origin. And then they launched AWS. And then they just started launching all these other things because it just made sense. But Amazon bookstore was the first thing that he did, right? He did not become a millionaire or even a billionaire because he did a million different things, okay? So that's the very first thing is people try to do a million different things at the same time. Well, you know, I have a job and I also, you know, I have a side hustle, um, like side hustles suck, I think. Uh, side, like the only time you should have a side hustle is because you want to make the side hustle the main hustle at some point. You start a side hustle because you have to and because you need to and because you want to. But then your goal should be that the side hustle becomes the main hustle. And unfortunately, a lot of times people just forget about that, right? The second thing is try to do everything yourself. I mean, look, I don't care what you're trying to do unless you... You know, and, and, and I guess a couple of years ago, we could have said, unless you you were trying to go to, 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 to space and that's already been accomplished, but unless you're trying to do something like that, everything else you try to do in life, someone else has done it, right? So trying to do everything by yourself without guidance is the foolish, the most foolish thing that I've ever heard of or seen. Right now, we're trying to go into selling on Walmart. We want to learn that platform. And some of my team was, you know, had the brilliant idea of, I'm just going to go and learn it. And I was like, why would you do that? We started contacting every single person on YouTube, Instagram, that seemed like they were legit and knew what they were doing about Walmart. And we were investing thousands and upon thousands just to set up meetings and learn from different people. And that's the only good way you should do it. If you're looking for a shortcut to success, this is the way to do it. OK, the third thing is and, 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 and again, this thing right here, um, I, you know, all those things right here, like number one, number two, I was a victim of I tried to do a million things at the same time, did not work. And it only worked and was able to scale when I dialed down to one thing here. Uh, I tried to run a restaurant by myself. I lost five hundred thousand three years of my life. I can never get back burnt a bunch of bridges to a bunch of great relationships that I'll never you know, be able to get back again in my life. Okay, so learn from my mistakes. The third thing is thinking they know it all. This ties up to here. And usually this happens because of this. You know it all. You think like you know it all. And therefore, you go and do everything by yourself, 
right? When I hear someone says, oh, I know what I'm doing, I literally run, run. I mean, I run, right? And again, my restaurant business, the reason why it failed, simply because I thought I knew it all, because I had a big ego, because I was, eh, eh, I got this, right? I got this, okay? Three, $500,000, three years of my life, I can never get back. Those three things I've been a victim of. Please don't do it. Be skeptical of everything they see. Um, I don't know if I personally was like that. I know to a certain extent, I am like that until, the, until today. Um, but I try new things, right? So, but I've seen a lot of people out there where they are just skeptical of everything they see. Oh, this person has a million followers on Instagram. It's probably all fake. Oh, this person has made a million dollars uh, or $10 million selling on Amazon. It's probably all fake. Oh, this person is it's probably fake. Why? Is it your limiting belief? Is it due? Is it due to limiting belief? Because you don't, and I'm not talking to you because maybe that's not you, but because the person does not believe it's possible for whatever reason, because maybe they don't see themselves accomplishing it. Therefore, they don't think it's possible for someone else. Therefore, they're just skeptical of everything they see. Don't be that person, please. Because again, this leads to sometimes to this, or a combination of those two lead to this, which leads usually to this and leads to failure. Okay. Uh, the other thing is staying in the comfort zone. Look, comfort zone is cool, man. I mean, it, it's awesome. It's a great feeling. Um, I was in my comfort zone for a long time and um, I've done very well with completely removing myself from my comfort zone. And every time I did, my income got, you know, I, a zero got added to my income. The very first time was just completely doing something completely new, which was going online. I had never done it, right? Never so, you know, never had an online business. That was the very first thing I did. And I built a five-figure business from there. And then it was me getting married and moving out of my parents' house. I had a business, was doing five figures, was great, but it was just staggering there. And then I got married and I got out of my comfort zone. Now I wasn't responsible for just myself, but I was responsible for another human being. And my income went to six figures within like six to eight months. And then from there, we were living in, in a town where, you know, my parents were five minutes away. My in-laws were five minutes away. We knew everybody. I, I grew up in that town and everything. We moved 20 minutes away. Not, not a big move, but also... I changed my lifestyle completely. I went from living in just a regular apartment to living in a high rise and amenities and all that stuff. Completely different lifestyle. My rent tripled. Uh, some of you may say, well, you're a fool. You could have bought a house. Absolutely. I could have definitely, but I just wasn't sure if I wanted to live in that state or in that, you know, in that community just yet. That's why buying a house would have been foolish. And my income went to seven figures. And then I moved coast to coast. I moved from California to Florida, where I know nobody, a city I've never been to, except last year we came here, visited for a week, just to check out a few places, and that's it. And that's when I took my business from seven to eight figures, right? And now we're trying to take it to eight to nine figures. So comfort zone, you know, growth is, 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 is impossible in your comfort zone. If you're not growing, you're dying. This is important for me to add. And write this down, please. If one isn't growing, one will die. Okay. If you're not growing, you're dying. Please, like literally, this is very important. If you don't grow, you're going to die because gravity usually does its thing and pulls you down. Being afraid to fail. Um, if somebody told me that, you know, your restaurant business was going to fail and you're going to uh, lose everything and it's going to burn down and you're not going to have insurance and all this stuff, I probably wouldn't have started it. But today, looking back at it, I'm like, man, I'm so glad that it happened. If I, if there is a time machine and I go back in time, I will do it all over again, knowing what I know today, knowing that it's going to miserably fail, I would not take anything out of the story, simply because I am who I am today because of that. I needed to fail. I needed to fail miserably because I became a better leader. I became a better entrepreneur. I became a better human being altogether because of that failure. Failures, you could, look, there is a saying, let's add this here. It isn't about what happens to you. It is about how you react to it. 
right? So it's not about how you, what happens to you because look, things happen to good people all the damn time, okay? I was a good person. I had in fact just turned my restaurant around and we had taken our business from about $26,000, $27,000, which was you know, just like this is how much we, we ever made to over 45,000 and on track to, to generate over 50 some thousand dollars within 45 days because we actually changed the concept, we changed everything. 45 days later, after we relaunched the business, it burned down with no insurance. Was I a good person? Absolutely. Did a bad thing happen to me? Absolutely. How did I react to it? Well, you know what? For about three months, I was miserable and I was I wanted to kill myself. But then I learned, I embraced it, I learned from it, and then I moved on. And here I am, right? So great things happen to good people all the time, but it's about how you react to them, okay? Blaming others and making excuses. Again, going back to the same story. I started blaming everybody, but then it wasn't until I took responsibility for everything. Can I tell you a secret? I actually took responsibility for COVID. Uh, the reason is because... For the year of 2020, my business was staggering at about $120,000 to $150,000 a month. And you're like, wait, were you complaining? Yeah, I was complaining. I thought I was a loser because it was at the same level for about six to eight months and I just could not grow. And it just sucked every single month doing exactly the same thing as last month. And although to many of you guys, it's a lot of money. Trust me, it's not a lot of money, especially when you're stuck in it for months. And it wasn't until you know, I started realizing that, holy shit, this is because of my limiting belief. Oh, you know, people are not buying this and that. This is what's happening. You know, I don't have money to launch more products. You know, people don't want my program, all the stuff, right? And then I started, I took responsibility for coronavirus. And I said, you know what? It's because of me. It's because of me, not because of me, coronavirus happened, but because of me, I am where I am today. I took responsibility and I started changing things for the, for the exact reason that, if somebody, if something, if somebody, let's say the president of the United States, everybody was going crazy about Donald Trump winning and losing and all that stuff. And they were making business financial decisions based on that. And I'm like, you know, this is crazy because you cannot control who becomes the president. Your vote counts. Absolutely. You should rally. Yes. But that still is not going to change the fact that you have no control over that. What I would rather do is I would rather take full responsibility of the thing that I can control myself and I can press on and actually make a change. And that is the business, my personal business, I can control. I can shut it down and I can scale it to hundreds of millions of dollars if I wanted to, right? I could do all these things because I control the input and I, could, and I control the output. So that's the thing that you guys need to worry about is only take responsibility for what you can control and do not make excuses because when you make an excuse, you're not in control. And when you're not in control, you fail. Also change your mentality from, I cannot afford it to how can I afford it? Because when you say I cannot afford it, what happens is you take the way out, the easy way out. Your brain just starts, stops thinking. It says, okay, well, oh, we're done. Can't do it. All right, let's move on. But then when you start thinking, how can I afford it? That's when all the crazy things start happening. Number eight is overreacting. Look, survival mode is important. And when your back is against the wall is really when the comeback happens. But I've realized is that when I'm nervous, when I see something and I'm just like, oh my God, you know, the sky is falling. I got to do something about it. Usually the decisions that I make are shitty, right? So what you want to do is every time you're dealt a situation, what I like to do is I like to run all the way to the worst case scenario and make myself okay with worst case scenario and then come back and then negotiate myself a better deal. For instance, I was arrested for a DUI and worst case scenario is going to jail for 30 days because that's what my attorney said. He said, it's probably gonna cost you about seven to $10,000. You're probably, there's a chance they might go to jail for 30 days. So then what I said is, okay, well, let me make myself okay with that. Let me make sense of $10,000 I'll figure it out, you know, get on a payment plan. Uh, I'll, I'll pay hundred dollars a month or whatever until I pay it off. And then, you know, I started kind of restructuring myself, my life around that I'm going to be gone for the next 30 days. So I made myself okay with that. And then I came back and said to my attorney, all right, let's negotiate a better deal. Let's go back to court, to the, to the judge or to the district attorney, whoever it was. 
and say, all right, well, no jail time. We're going to do X, Y, and Z, right? And then back and forth until we got a better deal. I spent no days in jail. I only ended up giving the court like $2,000 and it was a public defender and all that. So this was back in 2015, about three months after I my restaurant burned down, I was drinking heavily and that happened, right? However, if I had overreacted, I wouldn't have been able to conclude these things and I would have probably made some dumb decisions that I would have probably been until today paying for them. So it's very important that one does not overreact. The other thing is being too judgy and jealous instead of being inspired. You see someone making it and you're like, oh, you know, they, they did this, you know, five years ago, they did that. You know, I remember when that person, did, you know, and then all these excuses and all this jealousy and hatred starts happening and then start laying judgments on that person instead say, wow, that's amazing. This person was able to accomplish this. Wow, that's also possible for me because if this person was able to accomplish this, I can also accomplish that. If this person can do this, I've got two legs, I've got two arms, and I've got two eyes just like them. I can do it as well instead of laying judgment. Number 10 is being a people pleaser. These two right here, they just like, my God, I mean, I just hate them because you know what? I also went through this. And again, 95% of this stuff I have actually done and I've been a victim. So I'm telling you this based on experience from myself and seeing others fall into these traps. Being a people pleaser, actually, let me tell you another story. So in May of 2021, um, we wanted about four months after moving to Miami, uh, we wanted to go back and visit my family. And there were three weddings. Uh, my first cousin, my best friend, and then a weekend later, my best, my other best friend's sister. So um, what I was going to do is I was going to uh, lease a Rolls Royce, or not lease, I'm sorry, rent a Rolls Royce. And, and mind you, I was, you know, my business was producing about four or 500, uh, I think in May we did about 500,000 or 540,000 or something like that. So I could go and, and like with one month of revenue, I could probably, you know, a couple months of profits, I can buy, probably buy a Rolls Royce cash, right? But I didn't still drive a, a CLA $350 a month car, uh, $30,000 car. So um, I was like, you know what would be cool? And I've always wanted the Rolls Royce and maybe one day I will get it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, what would be cool is that I rent a Rolls Royce for the weekend. Friday is my cousin's wedding. Uh, Sunday is my best friend's wedding. Be cool to show up to the weddings with a Rolls Royce, you know, kind of make people, you know, and, and to me, like, I wasn't telling myself that I'm going to make it look like I've made it, but it was more of like, you know, I've always wanted to drive a Rolls Royce. I've never driven one. This would be kind of cool. And then I went on Turo and I rented a Rolls Royce. It was like $650 a day or something like that. The total with everything for three days was like a few grand, whatever I paid it. And then when I started running the story in my mind of how I'm going to roll up to the parties and stuff like that, not one scene in that story was it me feeling good about myself. It was always about how they're going to perceive me, how they're going to look at me. They're going to finally know that I've made it in life and all that stuff. I called the guy and I said, hey, bro, keep $1,000 refund me my money. If you want to keep it all, that's fine, but I can't, I'm not, you know, I, I just can't do it. And I ended the guy was cool about it. He refunded me everything. And that was because I realized that I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it for people. And that is the very worst trap you fall into. You know why? Because I don't know if this is appropriate for me to say on YouTube or to say here. And, 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 and if anyone is offended, I do apologize, but one time, a guy that I follow said, a while ago, I stopped, I stopped, and then let's just do something like this. Dick measuring with other people. And I'm not going to say it again, but. And what this means is that regardless how big it, how big it is, someone is going to have a bigger one, right? And if you just keep doing that with a lot of people, you're going to lose because instead of looking at what other people have accomplished, and again, this goes, this is tied up to that. If you keep doing that, you're going to always fail. I remember, you know, seeing people in my community back home in San Diego. Well, it's not home, but yeah, back home in San Diego. Um, you know, this, this woman buys a purse because her best friend bought a purse. Uh, her husband went and, and, and bought a, a newer car because this other woman's husband bought, a, you know, they went and built a $3 million home when they were living in $2 million home because their friends just bought a $2.5 million home, so they want to beat them. 
That is the very worst thing you want to fall into. And trust me, the minute that you release yourself from that is the minute that you will live a better life. And then this tied up to this right here, confusing flex with why. Um, the very first money that I made is I went and bought a Bentley. You've probably seen me talk about it all the time. I can show you a picture, but I'll be digging into my computer and you might see things you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, nice car was a 2007 or eight or nine or something like that. I bought it from the auction, spent about $60,000 fixing it and, and, and everything like that. A year later, I ended up selling it for like twenty dollars or $30,000 loss, right? Why did I buy it? Why did I sell it? I bought it because I felt like this is what's going to make me feel like I've made it. This is what's going to make people feel and know that I've made it. I sold it a year later because I felt that it was the dumbest thing that I've ever done in my life. Until today, the dumbest investment that I've ever made. The restaurant was a great investment, although it failed, but it taught me what I know today. But the car was the dumbest thing that I've ever done, dumbest purchase in my life. And until today, I've been wanting to buy Rolls Royce. And trust me, I can go buy a couple with one month's worth of profits. But, uh, you know, I just can't get myself to do it. It's a car that I want. And if I ever buy it, no one will see it. No Instagram pictures. Even my team won't even know that I bought it. it will be just for me, for my personal satisfaction. And that's it. But I still know that a $5,000 a month lease is insane. And $40,000 down payment for a three-year lease is crazy, right? Because today I dress exactly the same every day. I'm still wearing a watch that's broken and doesn't tell the right time. And it doesn't matter because I have a why. My why is to impact the lives of 1 million people. And that's the only thing that matters. Everything else is trash. So align yourself with why, not with flex. Okay. Not having big or impactful goals. Again, the same thing. Um, the reason why I got into coaching was because I didn't see myself selling on Amazon for the next 10, 20, 30 years. I was making about ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month in what that was clearing. Things were doing great. I was going out, having a good time. We were traveling, but I just felt that I, something deep down was missing, right? Something deep down was missing. By the way, guys, I've been going on and on and on for minutes, and I don't even know how long this has been. But look, if you've enjoyed this channel so far, if you have found value, please do me a favor and subscribe to our channel. And please do me a favor and smash thumbs up and drop your comments below. Also, if you want to learn from us, and if you want us to show you exactly how to sell on Amazon, crash it on Amazon, click the link this, uh, below this video to be taken to a page where we'll show you all that stuff. And there's a small presentation that explains to you. And, and I'm sorry that I keep rambling on, but this is very important for you guys to know. Uh, not having impactful or big goals in life. Again, um, the mission is to impact 1 million lives. When I see students post testimonials and screenshots of their sales and, hey, man, I made $1,000 and and uh, like Ken, Ken, Kenneth uh, Leitman or something like that. I forgot what his uh, last name was. I did an interview with him. It's probably in the YouTube channel somewhere. Um, he said, you know, the car broke down the other day and uh, it was going to cost about $500 or something. He's got a truck. And then he's like, I looked at my Amazon account and I saw that there was $650 in there. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I don't need to be stressed, stressed about it, where if this happened a few months ago, I would have been stressed as hell about it because I don't have just an extra $600 laying around. That to me is why I do this, right? So align yourself with big goals, preferably goals that are bigger than you. Not all about you, about me, what I want, what I want to accomplish. I want the next day. I want the new Gucci belt. I want the next Lamborghini. About other people, helping other people, impacting other people's lives, because trust me, it will go a lot further, a lot faster. Also resting on, on owns laurels. Um, again, when I had made it, um, you know, I, I started going out, traveling, all that stuff, and then realized that I, that growth was just becoming a thing in the past. And that was because I was resting on my own laurels. Um, you always want to be shooting for the stars. You always want to be shooting for growth. You always want to be wanting to accomplish the next thing. Because if you're not growing, if one isn't growing, one will die. Now, what I want you to do is comment below how many of those 13 things that you actually share right now. And then also, if you deep down feel like you deserve more and you just want to live life on your own terms and you haven't been able to, click the link below and I'll show you a way that worked for me.